It's regrettable. So, that, you know, I, I, I did have you, you were wondering, with all this, you know, reluctance to be happy, how did you end up uh, becoming happy? And it's because I had a turning point. I had a, a significant moment in my life. Something happened which uh, changed the course of my life, right? And it happened after the wedding of the friend who stagged who I'd been on, right? We went back to America. Uh, America is a country, of course, which prides itself on individuals being able to do whatever they want to do, which is not something I am comfortable with, if I'm honest. You can do whatever you like in America, and what I like to do instead is think of things I'd like to do, imagine them ending with me getting hurt, and stay inside and sitting down. Right. So we go out for my friend's wedding, and after the wedding, what happens is we go to a cabin in the wilderness, right? And we decide we're going we're gonna to drink and play cards and get to know each other again, right? And uh, when we get to the cabin, there's a slight problem initially, which is there's something in the cabin which I hadn't encountered before, which is insects. Right, now, I say that because you think, well, we've got insects. We haven't got insects. We've got midges and flies. We've got flying toys, is what we've got. <laughs> in America, they've got things called hornets and a thing called a cockroach. Now, if you've never seen a cockroach before, they're about the size of a Labrador. <laughs> if you imagine that Labrador is driving something like a Fiat Seicento, <laughs> that give you an idea of the build of the thing right now. With most insects, I'll be honest, what I do is I uh, scream and I run away from them. That's, that's my first policy. But obviously, you can't do that if they're in your house. You have to deal with them a different way. And policy number two is to stand on them. Uh, I'm not proud of that, but let's be honest, there's billions of them, so I'll just... Eh! Right, now, the problem with a cockroach, you stand on a cockroach and absolutely nothing changes. They just carry on about their business. <laughs> dragging you along with them. If you could get on two, you could ride them into town like that. <laughs> Built like tanks they are, right? So I have to elevate to option number three, right? And option number three is to drink until I can't feel them crawling all over my flesh anymore. Because <laughs> obviously, as we all know, that cockroaches crawl in your mouth while you're asleep, they lay eggs in your stomach and you die. So what I do is I drink an awful lot of whiskey, right? And by the end of the evening, as the smallest one in the group, I'm now what you would call royally shit-faced. <laughs> I go up to bed, pop a little plastic bag over my head so they can't get me while I'm asleep. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. <laughs> anyway, I, drink, I drink a lot of whiskey, right? I go to bed, come down in the morning, I'm feeling very sick, right? And uh, my only hope is that all my friends feel as sick as I do, and that's the end of today, isn't it? They say, what do you want to do today? I say, I really want to sit still and not say anything and then sporadically look out of a window, think of some toast and be sick. <laughs> I get down there, they're all fine, because they're bigger than me and they're not scared of anything like insects, so they're planning the day out. And my mate goes, hey, John, there's a lake down the road. We're going to go and see if we can hire a speedboat. <laughs> I just can't tell you the many ways in which that's not what I wanted to do with my day. Right.